Hey you, so if you're here, chances are you've either seen my kitchenware tour or my kitchen makeover. If you haven't, they will be linked down below. But today we're gonna be going over the only two cabinets that I didn't show you in my kitchenware tour, starting to the left of my sink. And by the way guys, every time you see this symbol pop up, that means that the item that I'm mentioning is a staple in my life or in my regimen. And I'll try to be as distinctive as possible, but do remember that they may not necessarily be a vegan staple, they could just be a personal staple of mine. Therefore, you don't necessarily need to supplement with them. But overall, you shouldn't really be taking any clinical advice from me because I'm not a nutritionist, so feel free to seek out professional advice. And this is where I keep the majority of my pantry items. First level is predominantly nuts and seeds. Then above that, I have things like tea and dried fruit. And lastly, some bins. The first bin is the one that I grab the most because it contains my daily supplements like first and foremost my pre and probiotic. Then there's my daily multi which you guys have seen me talk about before in my what I eat in a day video. I'm kind of testing a theory. Therefore I have an individual iron supplement but I'm not necessarily taking it. The multi has my daily serving. It's just kind of sitting there ready for me to finish. I don't know it's probably on sale so I figured get it now instead of waiting. Y'all know how it is sometimes. Obviously sales are meant to be enticing so I guess that worked on me. This is rather new pantothenic acid. I decided to supplement with it because I noticed the trend of seeing it in like oral supplements for skin health, specifically with acne. And there was one in particular that I was thinking about purchasing, but couldn't because it contained collagen. And then you guys also know that I take MSM. You've probably seen me talk about it in my KP video. Also good for skin, but mainly used for joint health and connective tissue. Another supplement, or some may call it a superfood that I take is Blue Magic. And this is essentially just blue spirulina. Spirulina is an algae. So it comes from the sea, therefore it is gonna have a little bit of an odor to it. And this is again, something that's said to support like healthy joints and flexibility. Some people have even attested that it helps with their workout recovery, even their energy. So that's why I take it because all those things sound like good anti-inflammatory. So now that leaves my liquid supplements, which are all tinctures. So these are just like extracts of plants in grain alcohol and you extract all of their benefits. The first one is a digestive blend. So it assists in the detoxification of your liver, kidneys, which is pretty much like your body's filter. So it's just kind of a good thing to stay on top of, you know? And then this product I picked up, as you know, this panini has been causing a lot of stress and anxiety. And let's be honest, my sleep pattern wasn't great to begin with. So this blend has predominantly valerian root to help you wind down and go to sleep. And I've only taken it twice, so I can't really attest to the effectiveness of it just yet. And then lastly, I have three individual herbs. The first one being holy basil which I don't actually remember why I bought this because I've only used it once. I think it's also good for stress. I have chase tree, which I bought to see if it would help regulate my hormones because I do experience cystic acne, which is said to be hormonal. In fact, that's also why I got the B5. And then lastly, I have willow bark. And this I will take as almost like a pain medication. It contains salicin which is actually the substance that's used to make um, like aspirin. So it's an anti-inflammatory. When you reduce inflammation, you reduce swelling and therefore pain. And then very, very recently, I actually picked up this that was of course introduced to me on Instagram because they love to show me ads. And to sum it up, it's basically like a pregnancy test, but for like your health. And I've only tried it once thus far, but I thought it might be good for getting a bigger picture of what is going on inside of my body. I've been trying to make changes and I feel like the more information I have, the better I can plan and execute. So that's the first been done. And the second one is pretty much all of my fats or predominantly so. And first up, you already know my love walnut butter. I love to put this on like bananas or apples for a little snack. And I'm not really a nut butter on smoothies or oatmeal kind of person, but if you are, I wanna get it a try. Next up, I have coconut butter, which you can absolutely make yourself. Like if you have shredded or desiccated coconut, you can just blend that in a food processor until it becomes smooth. This is good in like baking recipes or in like some raw dishes if you're trying to recreate desserts. I feel like it's kind of one of those things that's good to have on hand, but not something that I reach for all the time. And technically it does already contain coconut oil, but I also just have some regular coconut oil. I'm sure you guys have probably seen me use it to like caramelize fruit. Like if I'm making a hot syrup that I want to add to cereal or a pancake, something like that. A random cinnamon stick, that's just where it fits. And then also because it fits some chlorella powder and this is also a seaweed. I'll use this as a supplement for smoothies if I don't have any fresh greens like kale or spinach or arugula, really rich in minerals. But chlorella and spirulina also contain proteins, so that's why I try to incorporate them specifically. They even contain omega-3s, but this one contains more than spirulina does. 
And then the last bin is tea. In the first tin, my fiance loves to give me like sachets of teas that he likes. So I just kind of throw them in here. But in general, I've always preferred loose leaf tea. And so it's just the majority of what I have. And this first one you guys have also probably seen before, but it's actually not that tea because I've already finished it. So I have saved the glass jar and filled it with a different type of tea. Next up is my matcha and I use the one from Gold which is a black owned business. She also does a natural superfood face mask which I haven't had the pleasure of trying but this is premium grade from Japan and delicious. And another black owned brand that you guys saw me talking about recently is also Brooklyn Tea. And this is my favorite flavor to date, which is the blueberry rooibos. I hope I pronounced that correctly because I always struggle with that one. And I have a lot of these smaller ones, but I did also get some larger pouches and divided them into some jars and then store them on my counter so they're easy to reach for. So moving back down to that first shelf, these are the majority of my nuts and seeds. So we have pecans, pumpkin seeds, hazelnuts, hemp seeds, cashews, walnuts, Brazil nuts, almonds, sunflower seeds, which I know is quite the variety. And no, you don't need to have all of these. You can stick to a smaller assortment if you want to. As you guys may have remembered me saying in the grocery haul video, I think it was, such an assortment is a great way to ensure that you're getting a lot of the nutrients that you need. The reason that I'm plant-based is because I think that you can get everything you need from that diet. Some people might agree, some people might disagree. That's totally for you to decide and between you and your doctor to make sure that you are able to maintain. And then hiding behind that front row, I also have some additional items like dried cherries, some cacao nibs, lentils, turmeric, some coconut flakes, and I think that's maca powder. And then the shelf above that is where I have the additional add-ons. I have um, tacos, which is a like kind of a vitamin E supplement. I have sacha inchi powder, which I use as like a protein powder. That's actually a seed ground flax seeds, which if you bake is an absolute must because this is a very common egg replacer. And then a lot of chia seeds. You guys know I love to use these in my like quick jams. Also have protein in a powder form. Again, you can also use them as an egg replacer. Both of them, again, great sources of omega fatty acids, more dried fruit. This time these are mulberries, which I really love in smoothie bowls, but they were kind of hidden. So I just kind of forgot about them for a little while. Some leftover dried mushrooms. These are the lobster mushrooms that I used in the mac and cheese in one of my what I eat in a week videos. And then more lentils because I love them. As you can see I'm really low on the black ones because I've used those in quite a few recipes like the shepherd's pie. I think I also made some burgers at one point too. The last items on that shelf are tea because we know I love tea and some more dried fruit to pair with them. So I have these dried strawberries, which I usually pair with the hibiscus right underneath it. And in the words of Evelyn, I am a citrus hoe, so I also have some blood oranges because citrus is so good, especially again with the hibiscus tea. Hibiscus is my favorite. It has a ton of antioxidants. In fact, it has more than green tea. So if you need something to sip on, whether it be a hot or a cold beverage, what's happened to say? Get into it. Get you some hibiscus. <laughs> That's a little inside joke. So the person who that was for, she knows who she is. I have some butterfly pea tea. If you like drinks that are just like fun colors, you might really like experimenting with that. And then lastly, I have a lot of black tea, which is abnormal because I don't normally go for caffeinated, but it is really good with milk tea. So every now and then I might make some of that. And while we're here, I also have some pasta resting on my countertop, mainly just to cover that outlet because it's just an eyesore for me. So that's why that's there. And speaking of pasta, where I keep the rest, we're ready to move on to my second cabinet, which as you can see, is miniature sized. So I ain't got much here, but what I do have is my fourth and last bin, which just contains all of my like oils and condiments that don't need to be refrigerated. Toasted sesame oil, because you guys know I do enjoy Asian dishes quite a bit. And that is essential, also essential, some type of soy sauce. And I recently picked up um, this yuzu ponzu sauce just because I love yuzu. In fact, I actually used it in a body care recipe. So if you guys saw my video where I made like my mint chocolate chip body scrub, I also made that body oil that smells like yuzu and grapefruit. And I actually used this in the spring roll recipe that I showed you guys in last week's video. Prior to getting that, actually, I wouldn't even buy soy sauce, which is why this bottle is so low. I use it a lot. Only thing is, keep in mind, it is much sweeter than soy sauce and of course, naturally less salty. However, it is still low glycemic. Also have this chili oil, which is top tier. And as you can see, packaging looks a mess. This thing get greasy. If you've bought this recently, then you know that they rebranded. And again, more Asian flavors. So gojujang is a Korean uh, fermented chili paste, which normally I don't actually like, but I really enjoy this tangy one specifically. 
And as y'all know, I'm a glutton for punishment, so I like spicy food. Therefore, I have this hot sauce, and when I saw chili garlic, it was over. I had to buy it, wasn't optional. Just shut up and take my money. Does that now sound delicious? And speaking of hot sauce, gotta have Chipotle. This is a must. Like literally cannot eat Chipotle without Chipotle. If you are still using basic hot sauce and not this, stop it. And I actually didn't always like toasted sesame seeds. So this is just like regular. And believe it or not, sometimes I won't even use this for cooking. Sometimes I might use it to oil pull or use it on my skin. And then lastly, I have some maple syrup and then some balsamic vinegar because I love me a balsamic vinaigrette. And I love to roast vegetables with it. Mm. When it reduces, it's just so sweet. And then second shelf is some more staples, things that you're going to reach for more often because they're closer to you. I have dried tomatoes and chipotle peppers. Remember, when you can't get fresh, dried is second best. All you got to do is rehydrate them. Then you're working with a little something. You can create a meal without having a lot of produce. You guys probably saw me use them in last week's video to make the raw spaghetti. And I used the peppers for a chipotle jackfruit burrito bowl. And then here I just have some rando tacos powder. Again, this is the uh, vitamin E supplement. This is just kind of what's left over that doesn't fit in the container that I allocated it to. And lastly, the quintessential vegan staple that you will find in every plant-based person's kitchen nutritional yeast aka nooch it's basically just yeast it's not active so it's not something you would use in like baking but the reason why it's a staple is because it's fortified with b vitamins and normally people in general are deficient in b12 not just non-meat eaters so you can get a hundred percent of your daily servings from using a single serving and another reason kind of has a cheesy flavor does it taste like cheese no but it does kind of hint to that cheesy flavor if, if you know what i mean then on the third shelf, which is harder for me to reach, I have my pasta because that's not something I want to be grabbing all the time. I group things based on how frequently I use them and how accessible I want them to be. So I have some leftover macaroni for when you know the mac and cheese craving hits. Some leftover lentils because again, they didn't fit in their other designated area. Also because it fits some coconut cream, which you can use as a substitute for the cashew cream if you can't have nuts. Some canned peeled tomatoes for when you need to make a quick marinara. More pasta that I don't have a container for, so it's still in its bag along with one of my clips. Then on the very top shelf where I have to get on my tippy toes to reach is my baking goods. And as you guys know, I don't really bake that very often. So these can definitely be out of sight. So here I have tapioca starch. When we were deep into lockdown, I was gonna try making my own boba tea. Hasn't happened yet, but you never know. So I'm just keeping it up there. Might get desperate one day. Also some baking powder. I have used these for like pancake recipes, so you might have seen that on my channel. I got some brown sugar, which I bought also for that boba recipe, but you could use in like sauces, marinades, barbecue sauce. And again, because we are in the middle of a pan pizza, I do have a little bit more pantry items than I normally would stock. So things that have overflowed to the cabinet surrounding my refrigerator. I have some additional almonds because I like to make my own almond milk. If you guys haven't seen that video, I'll be sure to link it down below. I have some soursop tea and the rest of the pasta that you guys saw in that bag earlier. And if you are thinking about organizing your pantry, remember you don't have to go buy new stuff just to get organized. Feel free to save the jars that come with the products that you already buy. So if you buy nut butters or teas in a glass jar, keep them and then use them to store all of your goods. And that's it for today's video. If you guys liked it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And also don't forget to subscribe because my vegan story is coming soon. I know you guys asked me so long ago and I'm just now getting around to it. The reason it's taking me so long to film it is because I'm not quite sure how I want to format it. I'm thinking like a Q&A style might be fun. So if you guys agree with that, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.